Hello and welcome to another video from Mike Shej Rooster. Today we're going to talk about transformations. Uh, going to keep it simple, we're going to talk about the two types of transformations, expression-based and table-based. Expression-based transformations are oper basically are transformations on attributes such as time, where you take something and map it back to a, a previous period. A good example would be a last month or a last year. Okay. And there's table-based and uh, expression-based. Table-based is where you're doing the mapping in the database, in the table. So you create a column for this year, a year ID, and you create another column right next to it, for example, called last year ID. Okay. Uh, with an expression, you're assuming that there is no table that contains that information, and you need to do the transformation on the fly. So for last year, you would just take the year ID of the current year ID and just subtract one. This way you obtain the previous year ID, okay? So what does it do? Okay, so far, all, all what it's doing is creating a relationship on the attribute. And it doesn't do anything for you until you use it on a metric. So when you take a metric and you drop transformation, that's when you start getting these transformation periods operating on the values. So just to cut the chase, let's demo the two types of transformations. Remember, they're schema objects, so we're going to create them somewhere in there. Usually use a transformation, but I'm just going to use this folder here so I can uh, track them with the time, the uh, dimension that I'm using. Okay, so let's create two. One is an expression, and oops, let's create a transformation based on an expression. So let me use the year. So let me look at the lookup for the year. Here it is. Minus one. I could do minus two if I wanted two years ago instead of last year. Okay. Or I could use the column previous year if it's already mapped. But I'm using an expression for demo purposes at the point at this point. Here it is, and it's a one-to-one, -one, meaning each year has only one previous year. Great happy with it let's save it let's call it last year trans okay let me create another one that is table based just to see you know how things work alrighty time let's just do something else let's use month let's find the lookup month that's usually where your transformations there it is, previous month ID. This is done at the data level, meaning every ID has the pre. So 2009-04 would have 2009-03, for instance, mapped to it. Okay, I'm happy with it. Save it and close. And call it this last year month. Okay. Or, oops, last month trans. Alrighty, and it's still one to one. Alrighty. So I created two before I use them. I have to update the schema because they are schema objects after all. Once the schema is updated, I'll create a metric and use them. So I'm going to create a couple of metrics, one for each. Let me <clears throat> use revenue. So let's do revenue, transform, go to the folder where I saved them, which was the attributes folder. This is last year. Save and close. I'm going to call it rev or last year rev. Save. I'm saving everything in this folder just for demo purposes, but you can save them in the right place under the right right names. Okay, transformation. Oops. Already created it. We just need to create a metric. New metric. See transformations are not used anywhere else other than inside a metric because what you're doing is saying give me the revenue instead of at the existing time value that the report is pulling it's just saying give me the give it to me at a different level okay so let's go to scheme objects attributes In this case give it to me at the month so wherever revenue is calculated on the report it's going to transform one one month back and grab the value so even though you have a current month in a filter, 
you will get the previous month value because of this, thanks to this transformation. This last month ref. Alrighty. There you go, you got your two. Let's create reports now. Let's create a report to test this. So let's just create, let's look at the revenue by month, okay? So here we go, attributes. Let's go year, month. Let's use the standard revenue first and see what it looks like. Actually, let's do it at the year level. So where's the metric revenue? Now I'm looking for the metric revenue, not the transformed one, just the typical one. Let's look at the values, see how it looks like. Great, so we got 2008, 9 and 10, 8, 11 and 14 million dollars, okay? So now let's bring in our last year revenue and see what does it do. So last year revenue, it's gonna rerun. All right, so in 2010, the last year revenue is 11. Now you're gonna notice where did 2008 disappear, right? Well, that's simple. These are inner joined by default, right? So what you need to do, data, report, data options. You could also do this at the metric level, but you could do it here as well. Change one or both to outer, okay? And then the null values will be pulled in. There you go, so 2008 had a revenue of eight million. This is empty because we don't have data for 2007, but then you start seeing 2009 last year being the same as 2008, 11, 11, 14, 14, and the data ended at 2011, at 10, so there's no 2011 data, okay? So there you go. Now, <clears throat> I'm gonna add one more thing just to mix things up a little bit. Let's bring the month attribute in. Go to design. This is gonna screw things up until we bring the other metric, but let's just go with it. So you see what's happening. Here's the month. Let's run the report. Alrighty. So now you're seeing the same value over and over for last year. Well, because what Mike Shredge is doing here is saying, well, you're not at the year level, you're at the child month level, and it doesn't know how to transform it here for the month. Obviously, it knew how to deal with it when the month wasn't on, but with this, you know, so what you need to do is probably modify your transformation to operate at the year and month level by adding two transformations here. So you edit this. And one way to do it is you add last year and the last month, for example, so it knows how to operate. But, or you create a new transformation, you call it last year's month, something like that. But, <clears throat> I don't care about that complexity. Let me just grab this, yank it off. All right. Actually, I don't want it on my report. But I want the last month revenue. Obviously, you can play with this. You can have, like I said, a combo. Last year, last month, two transformations. So here we go. The last month is doing our last month computation, OK? So there you go, the true transformation, the table, and this one. And if you want to see the SQL, simple, or it should be simple in this case. All it's saying is taking the sum at the month level, and then it's transforming it where it's saying, well, I want to match it where the month ID equals the previous month ID for the next metric, the revenue metric, and then it brings them all together in a final pass and aligns them. So what, what it's aligning is it's aligning by month ID for the values, but it's pulling the value of the metric for the previous month ID. So it's a trick, kind of. It's saying, okay, give me all the data for 2,904. Give me all the data for 2,903. And then put them next to each other. That's all it's doing. Because we did the outer join, it allows us to bring even the null values in. All righty. So we did speak about one thing, which is which could be critical. So let me <clears throat> close this report. I don't care for it. We didn't use the money to many. So let's create a transformation, show you the power of many to many. This could be a little bit tricky. 
So we did year, we did month, but we didn't year, do year to date, okay? So what does a year to date metric do or a month to date metric? Let's see if we actually have that here. Ah, we don't have, we have the previous year, we have year duration, year ID, year date, and trying to find maybe the month. All right, so let me see if we have an example. We might have an example in MicroStrategies transformations. Ah, here we go. Year-to-date transformation. Okay, so it's coming from a year-to-date day table on day. So the mistake I was making is I was looking for to do a year-to-date. You need to look at the day level, not at the year level. That's where the many-to-many -many kicks in. So you saw that mistake that I made was probably caused by my understanding. So here's the day lookup. We're going to use the year-to-date day. So my understanding of my strategy tables allowed me not to figure out that where to go to get that year-to-date value, but it was stored in the year-to-date day, which obviously makes sense now when I think about it. So here we're going to use the year-to-date day date. So what is a year-to-date? Like revenue year-to-date, you're going to add the revenue up to the year and date that is on the report, okay? The current year date or the specified year date if you have a filter, okay? So here we go, but it's a many-to-many. -many. Why is it many-to-many? -many? Because you're going to have multiple days, okay? for the years. For instance, the first day of January, there's the revenue. The second day is adding the first revenue day and the second. Now on January 3rd, you're going to add January 1st, 2nd and 3rd. So you see what's going on? So you're not the value of the day that you're going to operate on or calculate on is the total sum of every day. So it's multiple. It's many, okay? Now this is very tricky because you can end up in a double counting if you don't have the right filter, meaning that if you, you're you operating on day and you don't have a day filter like say return today's data, you're going to have multiple counts because it's going to calculate for every day and then it's going to double count because it's going to take the year, it's not, it's not going to aggregate correctly, okay? So be careful, aggregation can be very tricky with year to date metrics and transformations. So here's the year to date. Let's save it and call it year to date, okay? So, let's update the schema. I might be able to create for you the problem that I'm talking about, but let's do it. Let's keep it simple. Let's try to do the right thing first. Okay, so we're going to create a metric. Let's call it the year to date revenue. Oops bring it in first transformation year where did we save it schema objects attributes there we go the year to date save and close I'm gonna call it year to date rev See if even if this even works first okay so let's create a report simple report Put the year attribute, add it to rows, and then I'm going to pull in the year to date revenue, see what it does. Alright, so here's the year to date. Notice what it's doing. It's just doing the revenue because I don't have a date filter here. So it's, it's pointless. It's doing nothing. So what do I need to do? I need to create a filter for day at the day level. So let's just uh, drag day up here if it lets us or add it to report filter and I'm going to select one day. Let's just randomly select. Let's go to a newer date. Let's just select 
August 22 and see what happens. So now I'm filtering my report by a value. Okay. So it did not return any value for us. And let's see the SQL. See where. So it's bringing year to date, etc., etc., in our join and the year to date, etc. Let's just go for one more. Oh. Some reason it was cached still, so it actually was working correctly. So here's the year-to-date revenue for a year, and remember the date we chose was September, or and if you're not sure what date it was, you just do this, go to design and pull the date in. And let's see what it does for us now. There it is, our date that we filtered, and this is the year-to-date revenue value. Okay. Just be careful. You saw how earlier when I dropped it on a, a report, it didn't show any value, but I had to rerun. Sometimes you have to go to design and run to remove the cache of the previous run. So just be cautious about those things because uh, it's not a prompted report. It's just a filtered so it can cache unless you have it set by default not to cache. Anyway, so here's your year to date. It's a many to many, so it's piling up all the values from multiple years and you saw when we didn't have date how it did a multiple count and it didn't work it didn't make any sense it's just bringing up back everything so let's do one more thing let's see if this is gonna confuse my strategy and let me modify my value and add two values see what happens now All right. So now it's able to bring multiple days and put them in here. But if I didn't have the day on the report, and let me remove it from the report. All right. So now what's what is it doing? It's filtering by day because it knows the day and the year operate together. So you're going to look at this and think, wait, wait a second. So which metric is this and what year? Is it the same day? Are we operating on 922 or on which day is this operating well that's where it gets a little confusing and you need to know what you're doing here and what it gets more confusing if the two dates you added are in the same year so if I'd go to 922 and then let's do this okay and now let's run this report look at that what did it do? Because both of them were in the same year, it didn't know which one to do. It added, it double counted. So it took the revenue here, this day, took the revenue here, this day, and aggregated, it added them up. Is the year-to-date revenue 16 million? No. That is the total of year-to-date on this day and year-to-date on this day. So this is double counting and you want to be cautious. When you're doing something like this, and it's not able to break it down you have a problem and you have the wrong results it doesn't this is this is meaningless at this point so you got to be careful about what you're trying to do when you use uh, things like year to date you could easily end up in uh, the double counting which is the typical or the typical problem caused by uh, using many to many relationships without knowing what you're exactly doing okay and if you're curious about the SQL I can show you quickly Notice the SQL looks very simple. Some year, give me the date, give me the date where the date is in two years. And what does it end up doing? It's bundling them up at the year level. It's not breaking it down at the date. So it's going to bring value from here and a value from here because you're doing the year to date transformation and it's going to add them all together. So it's exactly what you don't want it to do. All right. Alright, well thanks for uh, listening in to this video and we'll see you next time.